uh, unlike many of you, uh, this is my first time at Oxford. And you can imagine, uh, I'm terrified, <laughs> petrified. <laughs> uh, but uh, it has been uh, an, uh, a, wonder, a wonderful experience for me. You know, I have learned so much over the past two days, starting from yesterday, uh, from the global assessments of water security and the need to do, you know, at the local scale in much more details. That's exactly what we are doing in the REACH project. So it has been very beneficial uh, for all, all our research team so far. And, you know, and the, the kinds of deliberations we already uh, had and the kinds of deliberations we are going to have in the next few sessions uh, will be extremely useful. So I'll be presenting the you know, country diagnostic report uh, for Bangladesh. Uh, has the country been winning against the odds? Uh, the, uh, Bangladesh has made remarkable progress uh, in uh, economic uh, growth, reducing poverty, and good number of uh, uh, improvements have been seen in a good number of socioeconomic uh, indicators. We, most of the MDG targets have been achieved, and we have, uh, the government has already endorsed the sustainable uh, SDG, uh, uh, SDG goals. And all our plans and policies are very much aligned with uh, poverty alleviation, especially the perspective plan uh, to, uh, 2021 and the seventh five-year plan. The key policy frameworks are very much geared, to, uh, gear, geared towards accelerated poverty reduction and supplying drinking water and sanitation has been regarded as one of the main uh, you know, means in, uh, achieve, uh, in alleviating poverty. And uh, the national sustainable development strategy documents and other policy documents highly focus on environmental sustainability and disaster risk reduction. The aim of the government is to uh, end extreme poverty uh, by 2021, which is our 50th anniversary of independence, and also to increase the country's GDP growth rate uh, by 7% annually over the next few years. And there has been an economic transformation from agricultural-based economy to manufacturing-based economy, and the government is uh, focusing more attention on infrastructure development and manufacturing-based economy. So the government's industry, which is worth uh, $25 billion today, the plan is to expand it to $50 billion in the year uh, 2021. Despite all these efforts, as our minister also mentioned, about one-fourth of, uh, of the 160 million people still live below, uh, below poverty line. And many of the social indicators, uh, although we have achieved uh, big success, are still at very low level. There is a high heterogeneity in the incidence of poverty in our country. As you can see in the map, Half of the uh, 64 districts have poverty incidences uh, greater than the national average. And uh, poverty incidence in one particular uh, division, uh, if we consider 10, 10 sub-districts have, uh, 10, uh, 10 rich sub-districts have poverty incidence less than 44%, while 10 uh, poorest uh, sub-districts of the same, district, uh, of same division have uh, poverty incidence greater than 55%. That gives you uh, enough indication that poverty is highly heterogeneous and there are several poverty pockets in different parts of the country. And the main uh, reasons attributed to that uh, include the remoteness, uh, the uh, less connectivity, and uh, the occurrence of disasters and hazards. So, uh, what, I mean, we appreciate that you know, interaction between water hazards and exposure across uh, socioeconomic vulnerability have a profound bearing on poverty. So, but one thing to uh, note here that the poverty measurements, uh, the income-based poverty or consumption-based poverty, so they do not consider water security. And this is especially uh, important for the vulnerable groups, the hard-to-reach communities, especially women and children. We have talked a lot about the importance of focusing on women and children in the last few days. Uh, as already mentioned uh, uh, by the chair, the country uh, is located, uh, the, uh, has a unique geographical location uh, as a lower riparian of the three major river systems in the world, the Ganges, the Brahmaputra, and Meghna. And uh, there is a wide climate, hydroclimatic variability and flat, extremely flat topography and a low-lying coastal floodplain. These have made the country highly vulnerable to hazards and disasters. 
Annual flooding or inundation, which is considered beneficial for, uh, a, a, for a number of hydrological and ecological functions of the floodplains, but in extreme years, floods uh, can inundate more than two-thirds of the country. And moderate, we, we experience moderate to severe droughts uh, in the northwest and southwest zones, and which, uh, which have uh, negative e effects on livelihoods. And cyclonic storm surge, one of the uh, biggest poverty drivers in the coastal area, has become a more a regular phenomena. We, we experienced two big cyclones, uh, Cedar in 2007 and Isla in 2009. And river erosion is uh, an, uh, another concern uh, along 75 rivers, both in fluvial and tidal setting. And salinity intrusion uh, in the coastal areas associated with soils, river water, and groundwater uh, have been the major, uh, uh, major barrier for agriculture, uh, agricultural yield, agricultural productivity, and uh, agricultural cropping intensity, as well as for drinking water supply and health. So, uh, uh, Minister mentioned uh, about 80%. Uh, we have been successful to provide uh, drinking water supply to 80% of the people, and it's documented in our uh, seventh five year plan, 84% to be precise. And the plan is to expand it to uh, 100%. But if you look at the diagram, providing sufficient, physically accessible, affordable, <coughs> reliable, and safe drinking water is still uh, a big challenge. Uh, uh, no matter, I mean, even if you make water available to about, uh, on average, 95% of people, so if you uh, factor in all the other uh, service uh, factors, accessibility, utilization, adequacy, the effective availability of water comes down to, uh, on average, 13%. So this is one area we need to seriously concentrate on. Degraded water quality that results from industrial water pollution is a major concern. Uh, it's the poor people who are the worst victims of uh, this degraded water quality and associated microbial pollution, and the occurrence of uh, salinity and arsenic add to the problem. Uh, five to 19 million people are affected by arsenic uh, in the shallow groundwater, uh, uh, shallow groundwater aquifer in Bangladesh. So all these uh, biophysical challenges will be uh, amplified in future because of the growing population size, uh, climate change and increased climate variability, uh, sea level rise, uh, increased uh, uh, intensities and frequencies of all these hazards. If you compare the pov poverty map with the hazard map, what we find that there is a very good, uh, there is a correlation between the incidence of poverty and the nat natural hazard for example, in the northwest area, so a high incidence of poverty is observed where we, we face river erosion and fluvial flooding. And in the coastal area, there is a very high incidence of poverty which is affected by cyclonic storm surge and the chronic salinity hazards. Uh, what, we found, what we find is in the, in the flood prone areas, poverty incidence is very high and uh, the poor people, they are found to live in the flood prone areas more than in, in, in other areas. And the poorer sections are affected, uh, affected proportionately more than the richer sections of the community in the flood affected areas. In the coastal areas, 40 million people are, uh, are, uh, are prone to natural disaster cyclone and sal salinity hazards. So this correlation between uh, adverse ecology <coughs> and poverty incidence is more pronounced for the extreme poor, especially the women and children. So the poor try, uh, try to climb up the, uh, climb up the in income ladder uh, through uh, different means, but th then their efforts are hindered by periodic pushbacks, uh, by loss of productive assets, by environmental shocks and health shocks. And uh, the, the, extreme, uh, the areas where the extreme poor uh, live in Bangladesh uh, are more prone to food shortages, and lower household income, and they face more difficulties in expanding their livelihood activities and in recovering from financial crisis. And the costs uh, uh, for the extreme poor to address health shocks uh, are higher than uh, the other group of people just because they need to divert uh, a significant uh, proportion of their resources uh, from basic needs and other income generating activities. So, uh, so we need to focus on the fact that 
Poverty reduction efforts uh, need to include productive investments in water security and protective investments and interventions, both in structural, uh, non-structural forms, uh, governance institutions, against these water-related risks. So uh, we have uh, chosen two observatories so far, but there is another, a, a third observatory, uh, uh, which is under serious consideration, the garments, uh, the Dhaka garments industries, because uh, the government is planning to expand it to a $50, a $50 billion uh, uh, in, uh, project uh, industry in, in Bangladesh, but these are associated, with, uh, I mean, uh, in order to uh, maintain the sustainable growth and inclusive poverty reduction, we also need to make sure that the resource is sustainable and safe and accessible to different uh, users of water, including industry itself, but then there are other agricultural water users and drinking water users in the peripheral areas, and the risks associated with the affluence uh, to the receiving uh, rivers. So uh, two areas, so we want to manage, it's all about managing risks, so we want to manage coastal risks, and we also uh, want to manage the risks asso risk associated with universal safe drinking water. So the observatories, as, uh, as, as, as was just mentioned, are long-term instrumented interdisciplinary research areas where we would, uh, uh, I mean, to have an impact, we, we will be able to um, uh, build partnership with practitioners, uh, starting from government agencies and institutions uh, down to the community levels. So we are going to employ a risk-based framework uh, for improving the water security uh, and benefiting the poor. The likelihood of uh, people uh, being poor or poorer depends on the interaction uh, uh, b between hazards uh, and exposures across different socioeconomic vulnerabilities. And this risk-based uh, framework uh, will allow us to compare different uh, outcomes of different uh, interventions or policy choices or investment choices and, and analyze the trade-offs and, uh, and then uh, help us to prioritize or sequence the uh, investments or interventions. And we must remember that I mean, no matter what kind of investments or interventions especially we are talking about, there are always this risk of long, uh, short-term benefit but long-term impacts and uh, this framework will uh, help us to address that also. So Kulna is our first observatory. It's, uh, it's located in the coastal areas. So there are multiple uh, hazards and vulnerabilities. Agricultural water security is compromised by uh, cyclonic hazards, uh, which inundate uh, large areas, destroying the crop fields and fisheries, and, uh, and uh, have prolonged impacts uh, in the form of entrapped saline water in depression areas. And then there is the creeping salinity hazards. Uh, associated with uh, soils, groundwater, and surface water. Access to safe drinking water is severely constrained because of the presence of salinity and, uh, and the absence of suitable aquifers. And then uh, uh, health impacts uh, associated with uh, the uh, saline, saline drinking water and gender differentiated impacts. So uh, there have been interventions, major physical interventions in the coastal area uh, about 139 polders were constructed since 1960s. The, the idea was to prevent uh, the, 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 uh, the area from tidal flooding and saline water intrusion so that agricultural production can go up and people can be food secure. But these kind of interventions, although initially uh, were very uh, uh, productive and fruitful, uh, but over the years the long-term impacts have been uh, there with sedimentation in the rivers and uh, water logging uh, within the polders. So uh, the government has, uh, uh, has started a project uh, with the help of World Bank, Coastal Embankment Improvement Project, worth uh, 400 million US dollars. And there is this Dutch initiative of uh, Blue Gold Project. So these are two ongoing projects that we'd like to align with, but then uh, uh, so there are different components of these projects. So, uh, so these are uh, some examples of uh, institutions or projects that we want to engage with. So the question, we want to understand the dynamics of uh, water, climate, and poverty, and we'd like to identify, sequence, and implement interventions to address water-related <coughs> risks 
uh, to achieve multiple objectives and very importantly, benefits uh, for the poor. And we also uh, want to see the transferability or replicability of the results or the methodological framework to other coastal areas. Motlob is our second uh, observatory. Uh, uh, so this is situated in the southeastern coastal area with a population of 223,000 uh, people. It's affected by arsenic uh, with seasonal uh, flooding from the Meghna River. ICD-DRB, our partner, uh, has had a unique uh, demographic surveillance system since early 60s, which is called Motlob of Health and Demographic Surveillance System. So this gives us a unique opportunity uh, to uh, install a few no novel monitoring systems, which with already uh, with, with the existing very good data sets will allow us to develop relationships between social, environmental, uh, economics, seasonal in infrastructure, and water quality variables, and a, a number of good uh, water security metrics. So we want to inform uh, the government uh, on investment strategies and support institutional design and regulatory frameworks for identifying and reducing drinking water security risks in the area. And the kind of insight that we are going to get from this uh, uh, observatory is going to be very useful for the other observatory, Kulna. Finally, this is my uh, last slide, I promise. Uh, building partnership with uh, practitioners. Uh, we have already consult, uh, consulted a wide range of government institutions, starting from Planning Commission, General Economics Division, Water Resources Ministry, Ministry of Environment and Forest, as well as some development partners, World Bank, ADB, and some ongoing projects, CEIP, uh, Blue Gold, uh, and, and, and a few other projects, and implementing agencies like Bangladesh Water Development Board. Uh, but, but, so we want to build on this, and as mentioned uh, many times here, communicating with the local level stakeholder is very important, and that's what we are going to focus on. We'll try to come up with a very good communication strategy, uh, how, how we'll, we'll engage with the, uh, I mean, different uh, uh, stakeholders at different levels. So we want to build on our excellent engagement with the stakeholders. Uh, in the third uh, observatory that we have not finalized yet, the ready-made garment industry, sector, uh, so that will include Bangladesh Government Manufacturers and Exporters Association and International Finance Corporation, as well as other stakeholders. So thank you very much. I'll, uh, I'll stop here, and hopefully you'll have uh, enough opportunities in the next session after lunch to reflect on this presentation. Thank you.